Welcome back to Impact. We have with us for the entire hour today on Impact, the leader of the opposition, he styles himself as a post-independence leader. One of the things you said in the first segment in terms of the Andrews vision for Jamaica is that the human capital, you want every child to be able to innovate, create, and compute. Yes, yes. yes. It's a critical function of modern society. It is, it is. But the big challenge is reordering the education sector so that the little money, the 82, 84 billion dollars a year we spend on education, that most of that will go to achieving those ends and not to paying salaries and other recurrent expenses. You were there as education uh, and, minister. And, and you know there are some huge structural challenges in that sector. Yeah. Speak to how you'd overcome that. Well, I think in, I can speak to them with credibility. Hmm. Let's take one major structural failing of the education system, which was literacy. We managed to place the achievement of literacy on a sound business process. We took business principles and applied it to the delivery of literacy in schools. Today, I can hear the minister say, we are on target because the framework was set. We took a system that, yes, we give credit to Maxine Henry Wilson. She started some of it. And I took it from there, nationalized it, gave it key performance indicators, gave it targets, gave it the motivation, put in place a system of measurement, held teachers accountable. And right now, you're seeing right across the system an improvement in performance. Once you've got literacy in, your GSAT is going to improve, your CXC is going to improve, your university is going to improve. But, but, may, but may I put to you... So I'm just saying that point to say that it is not an impossible task. And if you are... Uh, 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 I understand so that. But, but let me hear where the thinking is on, for example, a bold revamping of the curriculum. We continue to burden our youngsters between uh, 0 and 12 with trying to learn just about everything before they get to the secondary level. Right. So Shouldn't we just say, listen, uh, computing, a foreign language, PE, culture, arithmetic, and writing? That's effectively where the transformation is going. In other words, we agree with that, that some of the, what is in the curriculum now, some of it overburdens the students. At the early age, you want students to develop the skill to learn. In the information age, Access to knowledge is not the problem. So you don't need to have a knowledge assessment test. You're going to get the knowledge. They're going to go on Google. It's going to be on their phones. What you have to develop now is the skill to find knowledge, to assimilate it, to filter it, and develop the context in which knowledge is presented. And so the reform of the curriculum has to do more of that. But there's another phase to that. Once you have gotten the student to the point where they can process knowledge, then you have to help them now to turn knowledge, information and knowledge into technology, mm. into know-how. And therefore, the curriculum now needs to move towards the development of skills and having students apply knowledge to solve problems. That's the basis of the knowledge economy. But That's another, the basis of economic growth. To connect the dots, Mr. Opposition Leader, there's a very critical matter of effective and good parenting oh, yes. and this country is suffering a severe deficit where that is concerned. major deficit and which is why we established the National Parenting Commission I'm big on parenting I'm big on holding parents accountable got a lot of pushback for that that you know people feel that if my child commits a crime I shouldn't be held accountable for it and I agree with you if your child commits a crime you're not accountable for it but you are accountable for managing that child, for growing up that child, for giving that child the love, care, and attention which would prevent that from happening. And therefore, that's how the state should move to hold parents accountable. And it's not, uh, you know, it, it's not an enforcement issue, parenting. Parenting is a love issue. Are you comfortable, are you satisfied with the progress that the National Parenting Support Commission has been making? It has taken too long to get off the ground. They've started, but it has taken too long to get off the ground. Mm. Um, and much of parenting now, the first phase has to be providing information 
and they need to be out there in the public domain engaging parents with information. I take the view that once parents know that there is an agency there that can help them, particularly parents who are in distress, and there are many parents, that they will go and seek it out. They'll All seek right. out the help. Let me ask you another one. You mentioned that this society needs to spend a little time on infrastructure. Yes. Well, we have made some good progress. When I drive, especially on the main roads, the highways, north-south north -south highway is about to complete its third phase, we're making progress on yeah, that. Yeah, and I wouldn't deny that. Um, uh, the, the highways that have been built are excellent, but the, you must ask yourself the question, Cliff. We've spent billions on these highways, yet we have not grown. Mm. Don't confuse one infrastructure development here and another one over there with infrastructure development. In other words, building a road, yes, is the road to growth. Mm -hmm. But the real thing, it is the network of infrastructure that gives you the growth. And in today's world, infrastructure must not only be the physical. No, It no, must no. be the digital highway. It's, it's everything. Everywhere you go in Jamaica, you should have a wireless connection. But, but, but I want to get back to that point, Cliff. It is the network. Uh -huh. It is the synergy of the infrastructure. Yes. Which is why, if you look at places like India or the United Arab Emirates or all these places that are investing heavily in infrastructure because they have the funds, it's not just about building roads. It is about building a community. Mm -hmm. So it's the road, it's the school, it's the Well, you hotel. have one big problem, though. Yes, Mr. but they all build it and coordinate it so yes. it makes it good for an economy but you to have operate we, in the infrastructure. We have yes. one big problem in achieving that. Yes. Corruption, where the, the, the system of awarding and executing contracts result in too much waste, where and I have to be careful now, but you know what I'm talking about. People get contracts because they're expected to give those who award the contract 10% or contribute to the political party campaign finances. Well, and it has been costing this country let's, too much. Let's, let's not waste time trying to say this doesn't exist. It, it's, 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 it's a reality, it's a consideration, it's, 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 you know, even if it's not up front and you don't see it, it's, I'm certain it's there. The issue is the determination of government to put an end to it. I'm not saying government will, always, will, will end it, but people must feel that the process is integral. The process has a level of integrity that cannot be compromised, and if it is, the process has some fail-safe mechanism to self-correct. That's not the feeling now, because the government has done some things to undermine the very arm of government created to ensure that overseas investors, local investors, can have faith in the process of determining how infrastructure is developed. You, know, you sound good, you know, Andrew. No, come well, on, let, me, let, me tell, let me say this to you, yeah? You have some in your own party who feed at that trough, you know, who are saying to him, but watch the leader. If you know, say, that I forgot to buy the car them for run the campaign. That I forgot to buy the pay for the transport to transport the supporters when him go up on the streets to take on Porsche. Where are you going to find that money? Which is why I'm a big supporter of campaign finance reform. So you agree with me? Of that course, that but I've always said that. My record is I support, even if it's not you know, popular mm. amongst all my colleagues, but I support it. Because there has to be, you know, one of the criticisms of, of, of Andrew Holness is that he really has no friends in the private sector, that he's not somebody in anybody's back pocket. That might, you know, that, that's, that's very well true. And that you're going like an angel, you know, that you have never, uh, it's not listen, fit I don't, for I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, listen, the Jamaican people yes. understand the difference between the aspiration and the reality. In other words, you can't have a politician who embraces the wrong and says, well, this is how it, it must be. People want to say, at least there is hope that we are moving towards the right direction, that somebody will stand up for principle. It may not always happen, principle, but you must have faith in the person that they will do what is right. And I'm so you're prepared to stand up to and the I'm, principal and, and to face down I'm those inside doing, your party? Doing, I, I, which is why I've been challenged for leadership. Why do you think I've been faced with these problems? You have said it. You've just said it a while ago. 
I stand for principle. And many people don't You're like it. You're not saying that those who challenge you don't stand for no, principle. No, I'm not saying though. that. But I'm saying so. that's, that's part and parcel of the basis of the challenge. There are those who would want to see me go out and do things that are, uh, you know, not well thought out to just rush out and oppose everything. And, you know, listen, Jamaica has passed that stage. The 60% the, 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 the of the population of Jamaica is well informed now. And they know when you're just talking. And I have to cater to the 60% who are well informed, who, who are keyed into information, who want to see this country grow. Thank you. I have to be true to my generation. Hold it there for us. We're talking with the opposition leader, Andrew Holness. Stay with us.